Today we're gonna make grilled chicken shawarma kebabs with a crisp romaine and herb salad. In case you're not familiar with shawarma, it is traditionally speaking lamb, very thinly sliced, pushed together onto a stick in sort of a cone shape, and then rotated on that spit in front of a heat source until the edges are golden brown and crisp. The fat kind of dribbles down and drips down as it's roasting and cooking and basting in it, and it just is so rich and delicious. And then they shave that golden brown um, exterior down and revealing new meat that then gets golden brown again. So it's just like never ending, um, delicious, really rich and wonderful meat uh, that can be served with rice or in a wrap um, with salad like we're gonna do today. And even though it is oftentimes done with lamb, it can really feature pretty much any meat that you like. We're gonna do chicken breast today, which obviously loves to be bathed in wonderful spices, a little olive oil, a little lemon, garlic. It's really fragrant and wonderful and flavorful, um, which is something we're always aspiring to with chicken breast, a great lean protein, of course. It's a lighter meal, but you're never gonna be thinking about that. You're gonna be thinking about how jubilant and colorful and exciting and perfect for summer when you wanna crank up that grill and get something refreshing but filling on the table that everyone can enjoy. And I think that is going to be just what we're doing here today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with my dry spice blend. I have some cumin, some coriander, and lots of sweet paprika. I have to say, paprika and chicken to me, one of the truly great combos. I am going to add a little bit of cinnamon, which I have to say, I think is something that adds to the sort of intoxicating nature and smell of uh, this shawarma preparation is that you frequently will find some kind of like sweeter spice included, a nutmeg, an allspice, cinnamon, something just, it just peaks a little something different. And I like it spicy, you guys know that, so I'm gonna add a few dashes of red chili flake, nothing crazy, just a little something. I do want some salt, of course, plenty of kosher salt to make sure this grills up really nice and flavorful. I would like to have some cracked pepper. And I want a bit of olive oil and a squeeze of fresh lemon juice. And the lemon juice is really great for tenderizing the meat, helping to bring some flavor, of course, too, um, but really keeping it nice and juicy along with that olive oil. Those are the spices that I love to have here. If you wanted to add oregano, you definitely could. If you wanted to add more chili in here, you could. I really think the paprika, cumin, coriander trio is what's most essential here with salt and pepper. So you definitely should feel free to customize. I also wanna add a couple tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley. Um, and there is something about the way that fresh herb cooks on the grill and flavors the meat and the veg that is really lovely. So I just pulled off some fresh leaves and the tender stems. And I am going to, after I finish this first chop, just give them another rough chop so that we're not having big leaves, but more even distribution in the marinade into our spice mix. The one thing I'm missing here today because I don't have it is onion powder. Love some onion powder on here, but we are going to stack some red onion onto the skewers, so we will still get that. Let's add a few garlic cloves just crushed into the mix here. Let's do three, call it, since mine are kind of small. A few bigger ones you could do just two and just pop them from their skins. I do like to press or grate these garlic cloves into the marinade. We want this to be totally infused throughout. Some fresh ginger going into our marinade. I took like a, you know, one and a half inch little guy, little knob of ginger here, and I'm just using a spoon to scrape off this soft outer skin. Then grab a microplane and just give it a quick grate to release all that wonderful warming ginger essence. Now we are in business, okay. Ah, lovely. So depending on how thick your chicken is, you'll wanna slice it in half a few times. Um, we're basically butterflying this chicken. These happen to be quite thick, so I might actually butterfly it a few times over. Um, but really, we're just trying to get it to a nice, you know, half quarter an inch to half an inch thickness and small bite-sized pieces. So start by taking your breast and just cutting it in half widthwise. And we can see that it's still a little bit thick in places, so I might go again and really just get us that lovely even thickness here. And then slicing it just into bite-sized pieces. Nothing too fancy or precise here. And I am going to trim out any gristly pieces like so because 
These want to cook up nice and evenly. We don't want to be wrestling with tough pieces. And that's pretty much it. It's not that fun to watch raw chicken, so I'm going to speed through this part, but just remember, you want to get even thickness throughout in your vegetables and in your protein so it cooks evenly, and especially chicken breast. It can dry out really fast, so I'm going to make these pieces thin and small so that they'll cook fast and stay nice and juicy. So I'm going to add the chicken pieces to a plastic bag, and that just helps to contain them and make the marinade process very simple to execute. All you're going to do is then pour maybe three quarters of this mix over top reserving just a little bit for our vegetable friends. Let me wash my hands quickly. Seal that bag and give it a lovely toss to evenly coat all your chicken pieces. And then this is going to go in the fridge at least half an hour. Do three, four, five hours if you have the time. Up to eight hours or overnight because um, the lemon juice in here, I wouldn't want more than that, but give that delicious flavoring time to soak into your chicken. The reality is it is so pungent and flavorful already that if you only had the half an hour or you had no time at all, it would still be delicious. Okay, to the fridge while we get our vegetables prepared. All right, new board, a knife, or if you were strategic, you would have chopped your vegetables first, which is what I meant to do, and then got distracted. Um, and all we want to do now is whatever vegetables you're using, you could use zucchini here. I love the red bell pepper because I think it adds a little bit of sweetness here that I like, and a red onion also for a little bit of sweetness. And like we talked about before, with the chicken, you just want to make sure that whatever we're skewering onto our stick is going to cook at roughly the same time as each other. So everything stays lovely and juicy. Um, and to that end, I will be cutting our pepper into roughly the same shape and size as our chicken pieces and adding it to the bowl with our delicious spice and herb and lemon and garlic blend. And I'm gonna go, yeah, two bell peppers I think should be plenty for in here. Just sort of skimming that inner rib out. And then for the onion, all you wanna do is slice it in half down the center and remove the two ends and the skin, of course. Trim away any less than perfect pieces. We'll give ourselves some beautiful sheets of onion to play with just by doing two horizontal cuts and then one vertical cut. And what you're left with are these great pieces that are easy to skewer on and should cook at roughly the same time as the chicken. Toss those to the bowl with our other pieces of vegetable. Make sure they're nice and coated. Just Go ahead and break your little onion wedges up. We don't need them sticking together. And these can hang out until the chicken's ready. So while the chicken and veg are marinating, let's make our quick little yogurt sauce so it has time for all the flavors to blend and meld together. I've got a cup of non-fat Greek yogurt here. You can use low fat for sure. You can use regular fat for sure. To this, I'm gonna add a bunch of fresh herbs. Herbs are a great way to add tons of flavor. They have detoxifying properties. They're obviously vibrant and green. They're usually plentifully available if you bothered to plant some earlier in the spring or have potters out in your yard. Um, and they're one of my favorite ways to zhuzh up otherwise very simple preparations, which this definitely is. Um, I am going to pull some fresh mint leaves, which is something I always have growing like wild um, at my house because it does grow like a, a weed. Um, oh, so fresh and vibrant feeling. So, you know, two stems worth of leaves here and just give that a little chiffonade, a little ribbon cut. And I do find that with like, really creamy sauces like this. This is a very particular, this is a Daphneism that we might not have talked about yet. I need the herbs to be big enough that I can tell they are fresh and present, but small enough that I'm not getting any big bites of like just a random leaf. I really, this is a yogurt sauce. It is meant to be creamy first and foremost with flavoring elements scattered throughout. But if those flavorings get too crazy, then suddenly it's an herb sauce with yogurt mixed in. So our beautiful mint leaves going in here. And then because I love dill, I absolutely need to have some dill here as well. Um, dill's optional. If you don't love dill, you can leave it off, but I just, you've got to have it. It's so vibrant and it's got such a unique flavor that I find really you'll crave, you'll want it here. And I'll leave those to the side for some garnish. Why not? And then I don't want to overwhelm this too much more, but maybe just a little parsley to echo what we have going on in our um, 
marinade. So just a few pulls of those leaves and mince away. If you have some tender stems, you can go ahead and keep those in, but thicker woody ones would not include those. And this is really a place where it is much more about the soft and tender leaf than it is about any texture from the stems, ideally. <laughs> Let's also add some garlic to this mix. Parsley in. This is a sauce that's obviously served raw, so you don't want to overwhelm it with too much garlic. Maybe a clove, maybe two. And I already have my press dirty. I also have my pick of the litter. I have my press and my grater dirty, so I can use whatever I want, but I will use my press because it's just simple. And then let's grate in some lemon zest, and I'll also add the juice of half a lemon just to keep it really nice and bright and zingy. Not too much zest. I don't, I don't want it bitter or anything. I just want a little hint of that lemon essential oil in addition to that delicious juiciness. Mm -mm -mm. Which brings such a nice tartness to this sauce. Really helps to balance the richness of those beautiful spice flavors on the chicken. Salt. We need some salt. I actually don't mind a few crunches of salt here, but any salt is fine. A little crunchy salt situation. Mix that up. Mm, oh my gosh, the lemon just hit. Wow, 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 wow. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, that's delightful. While we have this board all dirty anyway, let's go ahead and assemble the rest of the herbs and scallions for our salad. Guys, it's a salad. Should we have like, I don't know, a salad bowl? I think we should. Here she is. <laughs> um, this is the slightly smaller bowl, as you can see. I didn't go crazy and insane on you today. I have some beautiful romaine lettuce that I washed and dried here as the base, very crisp and crunchy, plentiful looking. Love how fluffy these leaves are. And to that, I mean, I'm really focusing on having this be a fresh from the garden collection of greenness. So more of the same herbs again, more dill, more parsley, more mint. And then I'll also add in a few scallions, which I think are such a great um, way to keep this very green and fresh and simple, but really just punch up the flavor quite a lot. So just skim off that outer sort of slippery skin. I think, I think three scallions will be good here. Trim off the roots. And then I find just sort of staggering the um, scallions like so lets me do a lovely little cut on the bias that looks so pretty. This is a great way to get scallions for garnish and obviously will look great in our salad. And I kind of stop for usages like this. I'm going to stop right when the leaves start to get a little bit darker green and just more flimsy. I want just like those crisp, beautiful elements of scallion going into our greens. And then let's get our herbs going. For the parsley, I'm gonna treat it sort of like more lettuce. I'm gonna leave the leaves very much intact. I'm kind of just gonna pinch them to release some of those essential oils, get as much flavor as possible, but really let them build this salad um, as a leaf more than just as a garnish. And then a little bit of mint I will throw on here as well. Oh good, I'll use my little, my little dill situation. A few more, few more little pieces of dill. We don't need to overwhelm the dill. I know it is a highly polarizing situation. Then let's get our mint cut up again and we'll make a quick vinaigrette that we'll let sit. Anytime you can let a little sauce like a vinaigrette or our yogurt sauce have a few minutes to sit before you plan to serve it, you just give the garlic and the onion and the herbs a chance to really infuse their flavor even more. So patience of virtue. Only a few mint leaves here. Mint can be a little overpowering in a salad, so I just want the taste of it, nothing too crazy. And that's it. Okay, so we have our base of the salad nice and prepped. Let's just make a quick vinaigrette. I'm gonna keep it really simple. Honestly, you could just do olive oil and lemon juice here. It would be great. Um, I'm gonna do just some olive oil, lemon juice, garlic again, dried oregano, teaspoon of honey just to give it a little bit of sweetness to pair with all this wonderful heady spice that we have going on with the chicken and the yogurt and everything else. So a whole lemon because we're just going to use the bare minimum of olive oil needed here really keeping it nice and tangy and bright. The honey will help emulsify so 
still get that great viscosity. A couple tablespoons of olive oil just to give us some body here. Let's get another garlic clove. This is a nice big one, so I don't think we'll need more than one, but we'll taste it and adjust as needed. Garlic in, salt, pepper, beautiful. How about some dried oregano? Wow, somebody likes her dried oregano. It's probably my, this or cumin, my most utilized spices. Just a little squeeze of honey. Date syrup obviously works great too. Teaspoon of honey. Whisk and taste. Oh, so good guys. So bright and vibrant with that lemon juice, a tiny bit of honey muting it out so it's really balanced. Oregano popping. The right amount of garlic, save you for later. Let's skewer some chicken, let's grill it up. Let's have some lunch. So our chicken has marinated. I gave it about two hours here. Our veg are ready to go. I soaked my wooden skewers in just a little salted water for the last half hour, just so that they have less of a chance of burning and actually help to infuse moisture and flavor into the meat as it cooks. Think about putting a veggie on first as sort of like a stop at the base of your skewer, which just catches all the delicious juiciness coming off your chicken there's no wrong way to do it. And I'll do a couple pieces of chicken and then add an onion, a couple pieces of chicken, add a pepper. And actually if they're folding over, if they're larger pieces, you can sort of, I just fold it in half and just thread that ribbon on. You can also, if there's like a larger slice like this that you're worried if you fold over, it might not work as well. You can kind of double thread it. Ooh, the double thread. <laughs> um, onion. In shawarma, they'll typically pack the meat together, which I do like, it gives it really juicy. But I find if I leave a little space, I get even more char and smoke and uh, and just crispy areas, which I like. Let me tell you something else. While you are making these, you might as well make a bunch because the leftovers on these are truly phenomenal. So good over salad, so good in sandwiches, just chopped up and added as like a little stir fry to the side of your main meal. Delightful. Okay, chicken is done. Just a few veg left, which you can put on a skewer and have as a veggie skewer. Let's get grilling washing. You can actually do up to this step in the process in advance. One thing to remember though is before you get to the grill you want to take it out of the fridge at least 20 minutes to half an hour in advance so it has time to let some of that chill come off which will make sure it cooks as evenly as possible, get those gorgeous char marks, all the rest. I have my grill plate getting piping hot um, over a high flame right now. I greased it with just a little avocado oil. You can use olive oil. Now I hear it sizzling and cracking at me, so here we go. I'm gonna go four at a time. I don't wanna overcrowd the pan. I wanna leave plenty of space for the chicken to sear and not steam. Plus I want full contact on the grill plate, which is another thing. If you wanna get a um, real sear, you can get a weighted, either like a grill press or a weighted pan and press it down. If you find that your chicken's not getting that dark, really like beautiful char that you're craving. Let's see how it goes. If I need it, I'll get it. If I don't, I won't make more of a mess. I'm gonna let these go about four minutes per side just to make sure that the chicken is cooked through perfectly. Let's see how we're looking here. Oh, oh my gosh, do you see this? That's what we like. Then we let it go a little bit longer. And you guys know, we don't wrestle with our meat here. If it's sticking to the grill, let it continue to go. When it gets those char marks, it will actually form almost a crust that pulls away from the grill really easily. It'll be time to flip. No stress. Rotate these guys. Oh yeah. Okay, so that guy's stuck a little bit. I'm not gonna mess around with him. How about you? Are you ready? Yeah, you're ready. Get your tools ready because these look phenomenal. They're ready to come off the grill. Gorgeous, golden brown, charred in places chicken cooked through, veggies softened, onions sweetened. Wow, summer meal perfection. Look at that. Yum. Okay, um, I'm gonna let those rest a few minutes. Skewers are ready. They are so gorgeous. Just gonna say, you're gonna look like a star when you make this recipe. I'm gonna go ahead and dress the salad now. Um, and I always like to just give it a quick whisk and then kind of drizzle around the edge of the bowl. And that ensures that every leaf gets covered and you don't get soggy spots. Ah, oh, yum, delicious. And this is just a light little coating here. 
to make sure every leaf is glossy. Because remember, we have, in addition to the skewers being so flavorful on their own, with all those great shawarma spices, we also have our yummy yogurt dipping sauce that I stuck in the fridge to keep nice and cold because I find it tastes best that way. You could also add grated cucumber to that yogurt dip if you want it more like a tzatziki flair. But again, this was sort of a simple extravagance day. <laughs> Lovely things to make you feel good and taste delicious. I'm also a big fan of feeling full after I eat. So I like a big mountain of salad underneath my skewers. It just makes it feel very robust and plentiful. Beautiful salad with all those fresh herbs. So crunchy, so green, so vibrant. Mm, mm. Ooh, ooh. Mm, guys, wow. Let me tell you something really special is that the herbs here kind of do all the work for you. Like even if our dressing wasn't delicious, which it is, you would still have a truly spectacular move. Just a little dollop, why not? Then get a skewer that has 10 minutes of rest so that it really has a chance to soak up all those yummy juices and that gorgeous char. And oh my gosh, Ladies and gentlemen, summertime splendor is served. Check her out. Ah! <gasps> Delightful. All right, let's taste this dang skewer. All right, the pepper part first. Mmm. So sweet and caramelized. Wow. Just wow. First of all, I'm sorry, chicken breast? Never before. Never before so juicy, never before so flavorful. Love the little charred bits on top. Okay, if you were gonna eat this normally, you would just easily slide it right off of the stick. And you can see how perfectly cooked every piece of chicken is. Lovely and opaque all the way through. Super juicy, I mean, look at this. Are you kidding me? With all that great char on top, just delicious. Wow. And let me tell you something even better, because you let it hang out on the grill for a hot minute, the smokiness really infused into that meat as well. Wow. All right, put it all together with your crisp, super flavorful, nice and tangy salad. Mmm, mmm. A little dipping sauce right on top. We're going Big Bites Club today, people. I could literally eat this every single day, all summer long, no issues whatsoever. Have it be ridiculously delicious. Protein packed, veggie resplendent, grilled to perfection. Although I will also give you a technique to make it in the oven if you don't feel like turning on your grill. If you do not make this immediately, you are in big trouble, mainly with yourself for not treating yourself to such a truly delicious bite.